have talked about uh, sustainability from uh, employability perspective, right? So, to my mind, uh, it's got two dimensions to it. One dimension is if you take it as a uh, take as a country as a whole, there are approximately 15 million people who enter the uh, become uh, you know enter the roles of employment or being eligible for employment every year. To me, sustainability is if there are 15 million jobs that are out there which they are suitable for. <coughs> That's quite some distance away. But that, to my mind, is sustainability for employability. Another way of looking at it is at an individual level. At an individual level, the way I look at sustainability is if at any point in time, an individual can match her or his aspiration to move up the career with acquiring capability and acquiring a job. If that can happen on a continuous basis, that to my mind is sustainability for employability at an individual. Sustainability on one level for me is running a business that makes a profit actually. I'm a B4 profit company at the moment. I learned that phrase this morning. It's very important for my shareholders. Um, we do uh, make a profit because that then becomes sustainable, right? At the moment we are. But sustainability I think comes from what Anand said in terms of matching the learner's aspiration with employment and employability. But I would also add that it comes from employers, from employers valuing vocational training, from employers recruiting people who are vocationally trained and qualified and paying those people a premium for the qualifications for the training that they have. That then becomes a sustainable uh, situation because the learner can see the benefit of the training that they are going to undertake and maybe are then prepared to pay for that and the employer is prepared to decide to take those people who are certified against those people who are not and pay a premium for that. That then becomes a sustainable ecosystem for vocational skills. Essentially is the ability of that organization to be either for profit or not for profit, but to be able to stand on its own two feet in terms of the revenue model, not to be uh, rely on government grants or any other form of uh, grant funding and willing to pay fees for the training. And from an industry perspective, uh, to have provided that quality workforce to industry, so that they are, you know, uh, industry is willing to pay a premium for that workforce. So that, in my mind, is uh, sustainability for our partner. Uh, so, so here in our training programs, all the students pay for the training program. We guarantee them a job that will allow them to repay the loan. And for the first few batches, we're saying if I don't get you a job that allows you to repay the loan, they'll take you off the loan. So that the, <coughs> the, the, the burden of the loan is not on their heads. Uh, the definition of sustainability, as, as, as I was talking about, I, I was thinking of an interesting definition that, I think that's, that gives, gives me more clarity of sustainability itself. For us, is that the affordability of the, from an employability standpoint, the affordability of the individual to pay for the fees, and at the same time, the overall impact of the overall ecosystem value goes up and, and therefore I'm linking not just employability, I'm also linking productivity that comes along with the training and, and therefore the entire ecosystem, the employers, the government, the investors, everybody has to see an overall increase in their value and that to me is the same. Uh, basically, how we started is very interesting. Uh, uh, saying go long back is a necessity of invention, the uh, mother of invention. So, uh, we started all the, our program based on that. And the core of our all program is only work ethics, work ethics, work ethics. On the top, we add all those things. Like we started, uh, uh, we were supporting NGO and we saw that we don't have a, like all the due respect to all the big institutes, but no one comes here working. Uh, I don't know what is the demand and supply, but we went in that direction and we are having a very, very niche program for each segment. And, and that's giving us a feedback loop every time to build in the product or co-create the product with the uh, people uh, if that product matters some lot. And it's an NGO or it's a VLSI or electrical or whatever segment you say. So it's all up because we haven't planned, we don't love either electrical or welding or whatever it is. But it is co-creation started with the partner and, and we see that if there is a necessity in the ecosystem, uh, uh, we, would, we would like to work on that. Three billion is the demand, is the employment market. And our graduates are ready at the rate of 0 0.5, maybe half a million approximately. So there is a huge gap and at the bottom of the pyramid, unfortunately, it is a very serious uh, situation where 
uh, uh, so many uh, repetitions or applications of this uh, or scalability of this should happen. A heavy rush at the in the, in the spectrum that we work with, we realize that 10th standard certificate is a very critical document in anybody's life. The last two years, we've been trying to play students saying that these are not 10th standard, but you will take them and companies say, hey, it's a policy, we will not. So the last six months, we're trying to embed a 10th standard certificate to the training program itself. So we're saying, if we can't break the system in the short term, let us kind of build a 10th standard mm -hmm. coaching into the training program, and we're trying to do that uh, we've got our first cohort of students taking up the 10th grade exams. They seem to be doing well on everything except algebra and we're still trying to figure out <laughs> how to teach them algebra. I mean, uh, we have a target to uh, skill or upskill 150 million people, so uh, the skills are across sectors. There are uh, 20 uh, one high priority sectors which have been identified by the uh, planning commission and those are the sectors that we focus on. And they include everything from uh, retail, banking and financial services to the unorganized sector. Uh, which includes, you know, training drivers, training uh, for uh, uh, maids, uh, homemakers, etc. Um, the uh, skills that we uh, focus on are not only limited to the uh, blue collar skills that most people associate vocational training with, but uh, I mean we are supporting uh, entities who are skilling across uh, all categories of skills, whether it is uh, training a plumber. To, you know, whether it is upscaling a lawyer to become part of the uh, legal process or the industry, um, you know, we are we are looking at across uh, all categories of skills and all uh, industry work as well. What is the duration of your program? Uh, you know, so we leave it to the private sector to determine the uh, duration, uh, the kind of programs that they want to run. So we have people who are doing uh, you know training for about six weeks. We have persons uh, running uh, for up to nine months. So we um, have a range of courses developed in Bangalore, around 60 that we offer across 12 industries. Um, like Madame, these are from north, north, entry level, if you like, to the 12th standard, but most of our learners will be at 10th or 12th uh, standard. We have a program called Workplace Skills, which rather like uh, Madam has described, this looks at uh, English, it provides an inter international English qualification. It also teaches things like communication skills, team working, uh, grooming, how to create your resume, how to apply for a job, and how to keep a job and work with colleagues. That's a cross-sector uh, program that underpins most of our technical programs. Uh, most of our courses that are popular are in the hospitality industry, so retail skills in particular but also um, hospitality catering uh, courses, hairdressing, beauty therapy. We then also operate in the harder skills, if you like, construction trade, automotive engineering, and so on. Typical course length ranges from 10 days, that's our smallest course, to a, an average of about six months, but some of our programs are over a um, From a Manipal global education perspective, there are two parts to it. One is the vocational education, which he has covered, that is done exclusively through the other piece is uh, for higher education where we tend to be functionally aligned, sectorally speaking. So, for example, there is a focus on banking and there is a very, very um, sharp focus on what banking sector requires at multiple levels. Start, you know, entry level, right up, go, you know, go up to entry level managerial. So that's, that's a fairly wide spectrum. Uh, or for that matter, there, are, there is a focus on incorporating skills, employability, capability, uh, you know, within uh, the uh, higher education degree programs that we run, either uh, in campus or face-to-face -face programs, or uh, programs that are offered through distance education. So th it actually covers a wide spectrum. Uh, the functional areas, you know, very similar to what John just uh, went through. So that's one part of the uh, the answer. The other answer, in my advisory capacity, including being a venture advisor, get to come across a number of companies, and I think you could say that a vast majority of where I am seeing. Uh, skills focus currently, you know, coalescing is in the services sector. Uh, there seems to be a fairly, and you know, NSDC will be, uh, the, the way Gauri is agreeing, I'm sure she will be able to support this. I think there isn't enough accent on the more hard skills, if you can call it that, the manufacturing side, you know, the welders and, and, and all of that stuff, as much as it ought to be. Uh, and the general trend seems to be a lot more focus on the services sector. Now, whether it's good, bad, I, 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 I'm not judging it. I'm just saying this is what I'm seeing. 
and uh, you know you, you just need to look at it in perspective but that's what it is today in the first sector what is the duration of the program the duration program can range from a few days to uh, to well over a year in some instances as john was mentioning which is the vocational side i'm not seeing too many of the one plus year in the in other uh, entities outside i'm typically seeing a max of about six months in the higher education, typically that gets aligned to the duration of the degree programs that people go through, whether it's a two-year, three-year programs that people go through, it tends to get aligned. There also there are instances where the last two semesters of a three-year program, there is a lot more accent on gaining skills and becoming more employable as against the first two years. So it's, it's therefore a, uh, you know, it's, it's a reverse telescope, so it tends to get, uh, you know, uh, coagulated at the end, so to speak.